technical aspect of tattooing is very it's very difficult to to grasp and to understand there's a lot that goes into it versus um, you know any other type of medium because you know on paper it's paper on skin everybody's skin's different everybody's skin reacts different um, you need to know the right needles to use things of that nature skin depth there's a lot a lot more to it there's a canvas that's living and breathing that moves that's not flat nothing on us is flat as people so you're taking a flat image and you're putting it on like your arm a round surface that's that stretches you know it's elasticity there's you know the person themselves if they're nervous or if it hurts well they all hurt but if it hurts to the point that they can't handle it then they start moving and wiggling and then you know it changes the entire process of it and it could go really bad really quick and people don't don't really seem to understand that people say oh, your body's a temple well yeah but have you ever seen a temple that doesn't have markings on it have you ever seen a pyramid that didn't have hieroglyphics on it you know what I mean like there's a reason that since the beginning of time we've drawn and scribbled on walls and tattooed ourselves. I mean, tattoos aren't new. This isn't something that we just came up with in the past hundred years. I mean, the, the oldest tattoos in the world are thousands of years old. All these tattoos um, are done through traditional techniques of hand, hand poking and hand tapping. Um, this is all done in a Filipino hand poking style. Down through the centuries, there are a variety of meanings that tattoos carried. Uh, more often than not, for indigenous peoples, First Nations peoples in Canada, they demarcated uh, rite of passage ceremonies or you know movement through one stage of life to the next. So for women, when a woman reached uh, adulthood, then marriageable age, then maybe after the first child or um, commemorated her marriage. For men, typically it was sort of a form of uh, achievement. It could be in hand-to-hand -hand combat, or maybe killing a really powerful animal like a polar bear or a bear. Um, but more often than not, these tattoos were never really given freely. They had to be earned in society. With the development of modern tattooing equipment in New York City at the turn of the 19th century, that's when tattooing really became sort of a commercial enterprise for some, but still those individuals from the margins of society more or less, I mean, it wasn't readily accepted. With the exposure of athletes that are heavily tattooed, singers, um, actors, you know, people that are in the public eye that are constantly in the media, and the more of them that have tattoos, the more acceptable it is around the world. It's funny, so this yellow tint of the paper, Nowadays, like if you look at that piece, people tone the paper to look like this, but in reality, it looks like that from smoke. So it was hanging on the wall and from smoking, it eventually turned yellow. So that's like, that's like real, like real deal tattoo history. There's a, there's a cultural thing that's happened in the past, say, five years where having a tattoo is looked at differently than it was. Up until a point where television came into play and it opened the door to a lot of people. So when I started tattooing, um, the very first year I actually was tattooing, the first episode of Miami Inc. aired. I watched it change. My clientele were bikers and drug dealers and blue collar guys that were welders or boiler makers, people that, you know, you, it didn't matter. Um, and then I started seeing like soccer moms and nurses. And I have clients that are doctors and that are lawyers and people that you would never expect. And when they take their suit off, they're as covered as I am. The 
but there's no reason for um, for there to be contests about who the best tattooer is or not. This is art. It's um, it's subjected to who the person is um, who's receiving the tattoo. When when you had to go to some strange place to find a magazine to even peek at this stuff, you had no idea what what people could do. And now that you can just go on the internet and do do do, and you can be there. Man, people are going, oh, wow. Like, I just always thought it was like a bunch of black lines wrapping around an arm. I had no idea that I could, like, put my family's coat of arms on my back with all this other stuff that relates to me, you know, or something of this nature, you know. And now that they see it like that, they turn around and go, well, that's something worth looking at. My point of view, and this is just me, if I owned a Bentley, I'm going to do whatever I want to it. You know what I mean? If I owned a Bentley and I wanted to cut the roof off of it, it's mine. I'll put a bumper sticker on it. I'll spray paint it. You know, I, it, that's, it's mine. So for somebody to tell you what you can and can't do with your body seems absurd to me.